Hi friends, how are you doing today? I'm glad you came to join me. Um, today we're going to be doing my dining room. I've work, been working on that. Of course the holidays are coming up, so I like to think about that. Get a head start on it and just start improving the whole ambiance of the dining room. And I've um, done some upcycling. I received a table someone left here, left behind. And I was able to get that into my dining room and do a little bit of finishing touches on it and I brought a couple of the chairs in and then I got on a roll and started re uh, well not recovering but making new slip covers for my other chairs my other four chairs so I'm going to show you all but that I have a separate video teaching you how to make these slip covers for Parsons chairs with four cuts of fabric it's really easy and this is one of them right here that I've done so um, hopefully I did a little stenciling on it with some fabric paint and stencils. So that will be a future video. But today we're gonna to talk about how once you start raising your frequency, you can change your world. So if you're uh, going into a room, for instance, and it brings you down, or there's things in there that are broken or you don't like, or they're dirty or cluttered or dusty, then that's gonna bring your energy down a few notches. But if you can make some simple changes, like maybe a little paint on something or, or a new slip cover, then um, that's what I wanna show you today is how you can just refresh what you already have and um, get ready for those guests to arrive. So elevating the dining experience. Let's talk about that for a minute. And I've got my notes here, so I'm, that's why I'm looking over. But Okay, so you might want to start with a prayer of gratitude. Gratitude brings in a good feeling within everybody. You're thankful for the food. You're thankful for the people that work so hard to bring that food to the table. And you're expressing gratitude for the creator. So that's one way to bring an element of a higher vibration into your dining room experience. And then the next one would be the good food. You wanna make fresh, good food, not overly processed foods that are gonna harm your body, but fresh organic foods that you've made from scratch if possible. And maybe you got a few people to help you and bring some of those high vibes into the house and that love that you're putting into the food as you're cre creating the dishes that you love the most. That's one, that's another one. And then the conversation should always be kept on a, you know, a nice level where people are respecting each other and enjoying each other's company, being positive, and just uh, creating a, a more enriching experience, especially if you have children at the table. You want to be um, teaching them those things that they need to learn by sitting at a table, learning to be still, enjoying the conversation, and just taking part in the family atmosphere. The next one would be dessert. If you like dessert as much as I do, I always like to have dessert. And I have a really great recipe for an easy flan where you use like five ingredients. And when you bring it out to the table and flip it over and that beautiful caramel sugar, caramelized uh, syrupy sugar flows over the sides, it's a wow factor. So you probably have a dessert up your sleeve, like maybe a tiramisu, or a trifle or something that you can put on the table and just really impress your guests. Not so much to impress them, but to make them feel special and make them feel like, wow, you kind of went out of your way to do a little something extra. So today I'm gonna to focus on the fact that we definitely want comfortable seating and we want solid, sturdy, practical things, especially if you have children or a family at home that um, you wanna be able to take this off and throw it in the wash, or you wanna be able to really clean your table, your tabletop easily, or you know, put your linens down and, and really make it look nice. But, um, so first of all, I wanna tell you that I what I did was, with this table that I received, I decided to keep the factory finish on it. So I left the top, it's like a solid wood maple and it's got the 
veneer that uh, you can see the different, uh, the way the veneers have been placed so that the grain of the wood goes in and it's just a beautiful, beautiful tabletop. And when you have a factory finish on your table, um, I'm one to keep that because they probably did, you know, at the factory, they probably did a much better job than I could have done at home on my own. So yeah, I you'll see, I set my table, I set my chairs up on top of here and move them around and everything and it doesn't scratch. So that's a good thing. At the end of this video, I'm gonna do a floral arrangement and I'm going to set this table. And I have, um, well, some simple ways of, some simple ways of decorating your table. Like I have a, um, an old curtain from Target a white linen curtain that I'm going to tear up and put on the table. And I'm going to mix up a few things and um, just bring in things to give it that sort of homey touch and that cottage look and that kind of casual elegance that I'm always striving for. This is the new table and as soon as we moved it into the house one leg broke off so I had to get it fixed and I also painted the base and the apron while it was getting fixed here's the old chairs the original finish and this is my inspiration photo I just love the way this looks now here's my table all ready to go just some chalk paint little wax nothing fancy so I got busy with the chairs removing the old seats. Originally, I just planned to paint everything white with a white linen chalk paint and call it a day. But you're gonna see how things took a different turn after I slept on it for one night. to be very frugal in this design I pulled out a bunch of fabrics that I had in my stash some bolts of fabrics that I had saved I was planning to just reupholster the seats keep the back and the wood parts white and so I pulled out some French bees very French and you know I have a French country design as you can see and then I tried the ticking stripe which is leaning a little more towards a farmhouse look you can see those old slip covers from my Ikea chairs weren't fitting my new uh, Parsons chairs. I also tried a red plaid. I thought that could be pretty with the red and yellow toile on the curtains. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you have a favorite? French script is always a winner. And this could very well be the one. I'm also using this one in my office area, so it would be doing double duty in the house. And then I've always loved this cottage floral. It has kind of an English cottage vibe. Okay, so nothing too major, but I, after trying all those fabrics, I started having more thoughts. I didn't, it wasn't clicking for me. I didn't love any of them. And I didn't think any of them would, I thought each one was gonna give it like a farmhouse or a country or too flinch or uh, too, matchy all those fabrics none of them quite got it for me so i started thinking and i've decided not to do a manicure bef 
well, till after I finish painting. And this video is probably gonna take longer to put out, but I think it'll be worth it. Because I decided to take an old drop cloth and I've washed it. And I'm gonna show you how I upholster the seats and I'm gonna do some stenciling. So, um, let's see what's cracking next. It's a thick paint. Next, I'm adding some salt wash to give it that layered look. I remember as a child looking at some old furniture like an old chair that somebody had painted pink, but I could see underneath that chair so many layers of paint, and I was fascinated about how many times that chair might have been painted. So I was going to see if I could get the same look. I was just gonna put these three colors that I'd mixed up with the salt wash on just randomly all over the chair. I wasn't gonna really put any on the, the uh, rattan part, but I wanted to get kind of like there had been layers and layers of paint put on this chair over the years. And it was gonna look a little bit old, a little bit new, and just have that sort of je ne sais quoi quality. I can't quite put my finger on it. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to put some crackle on it. Then I'll paint it white. Okay, I haven't used this before, but I got this Mod Podge. This is the only thing they had in Crackle at Joann's. This is pretty dry, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it on in air, certain areas, just where I want it. So typically with the seats, you don't want to just put your fabric over the bare raw foam like that. Uh, there could be stains if it's an old cushion. If you uh, don't want to change this, what a, normally what an upholsterer would do is put batting over it, but I couldn't, I don't have my batting handy. So what I did was I got an old fleece blanket and cut it up and washed it. And I'm going to leave I'm going to just lay it over this. Now this won't have to be tucked in. I won't have to tuck this under. I'll just have to trim it like along the sides like this. That's basically what I'm going to do with this. I'm holding it up like this so you can see it. Normally you'd probably set it on a table or something, but anyway, that's a good way to kind of get the edges. Now, if I had spray glue, I would spray my cushion. I don't have spray glue. You know, I'm out of supplies it seems, but um I will put a little bit of Mod Podge on the seat, on the cushion. So I'm going to smooth this down because I don't want it to move when the fabric's on it. So I'm going to lift this off, put some Mod Podge on here and let it cure overnight. And then tomorrow I'll put the fabric on it. And you'll get to see how that looks. Let that rest.
rest overnight. Make sure you have your backing underneath. I'll be mixing some paint. Castle. mostly going to use the brown. I'll mix a little bit of the gray in, probably using the smaller tip. I 
We'll just let them dry like that before we pull up our stencil. Well, I hope it's not too soon to do this, but we're going to lift it. Oh, I think it looks great. I like it. Just moved it all out. Now I'm going to flip it over and start on one end like this. Tug your sides, pull them up so they're taut. And then go from side to side. And that's the reason we cut this short so we don't have too much bulk. So we're just going to, and I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna trim some of that so I'm not gonna go all the way up. This drop cloth is a really nice kind of a linen-y fabric. Okay, so when you get to these corners, what I'm doing, let's see if I can show you this way. I'm kind of going like this. So there's not so much, you wanna reduce the amount of bulk that you have. each corner in and then flatten this and pull it over like that and then pretty much the same for this pull your corners in and go across kind of flat and add more staples where you need them to reinforce what you're doing. I would say one every, at least one every two inches. Voila, there you have the cushion. Let's go put it together. So I've got my container here. I just love the green patina on this. It's an older uh, metal container that I have. And I'm just going to put some hot glue in the bottom and add this block of foam. And I'm just centering it kind of in the middle. I was going to do this off camera, but that's basically what I did right there. I have mostly faux flowers here that I recently purchased and some forest moss to put in the bottom of the pan. And then I also pulled some things from the trees, but I have some Chinese lanterns and some berries. Okay, so we've got our foam in there. Next, what we do is we put our greenery. So I've got these I've already taken all the tags off. Some of these are fake flowers and leaves, and some are from the garden. So first you wanna place your greenery. Okay, so you wanna have a, pair, a good pair of wire cutters on hand, and you wanna shape your leaves a little bit before, kind of fluff them out before you and you can also cut these apart if you have that thought. You might have that thought. But I want my leaves to kind of come out over the side. And I haven't really planned this too much, but we're just going to kind of do it as we go. I like kind of a curvy leaf look. 
I may not even use all of these. I got these on sale at uh, Big Lots. They were on sale for 29 cents each. My friend talked me into it, so I got them. I'm glad I did. Because they're really going to come in handy. It's one branch, so I'm going to end up cutting it into little parts. And this will be the last, probably one of the last things I put on. So you'll see me pulling all of these apart and using them separately in the design. So the next one will be, and we can do that with these two, random placement in kind of a balanced fashion. Then I also got some grapes. I like to put sometimes a little element of, of food into an arrangement. So I'm just gonna tuck this in right here. Don't plan on gluing it or anything. And then I'm gonna put one on the opposite side. These are little ball pieces around. So as you can see at this point, there's not a lot of contrasting colors. So you need to, uh, we're going to need to bring some contrasting colors in. That's why I got these. Thought that would make a nice contrast. So we'll pop some of those. So I've got four of these. One on each side. We're always thinking about balance, how we want to balance it. So. We're going to balance our colors a bit. So I can keep this loose like this, or I could add some of these seed pods, which I think are really pretty. And that kind of brings in a fall flavor. Like I said, these are pretty dry, so you don't want to get them around your candles. Of course, I'm going to use non-battery uh, can uh, battery candles, so. Actually, these dried up pretty nicely. I think they're going to add a nice contrast to this design. this curtain it's um, originally from Target probably got it at some thrift store and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it into I'm going to make it into a runner Ooh. and I want the raw edges and I'll tell you what brand it is. Let's see. Home. It's home. It's called home. And I'm going to do the raw edges all the way around. So I just take a little snip it out that like that. And then it's real easy to rip it. And then I'll do it the same thing here all the way around. And then I'm not going to use the whole piece. I'll just cut it into the size that I want, which is going to be approximately, see most curtains are about 52 inches wide. So it's going to be about 24 inches, 24 to 26 inches. So what I'll do is, Fold this in half, and it's just one curtain panel. Tear it down the middle. Okay. 
beautiful piece of linen. Just beautiful. And I can use this for something else. So here we have it. It's got a few frayed ends, which is okay. You can trim those. And next I'll show you what we do with this. So that about does it for this video, my friends, but just remember that your vibrational frequency or your personal vibe can be lifted by be doing beautiful things to your home so that every time you walk through it, you feel good and you smile and you're uplifted. And so will the people that live there with you or come to visit will have the same experience that you've had that you've created in your own home. Your vibrational frequency level can change your world. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming and check out my other videos. I've got the flan recipe. I've got the simple slip cover tutorial and I've got a tiramisu um, video in there that I did for Valentine's one year.